Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, we took the 2D still and projected it onto a 3D environment to create a 3D scene that we can work within. Let's pick up from where we left off. Download links for the media are available in the first part of this video. So we've created the 3D surfaces, projected onto them and aligned them to the perspective of the still. Looking at the working view, if you orbit the environment, you can see that everything lines up. However, if you scrub the time bar, everything goes crazy when you're not looking at the frame you are lined on. This is because the still is currently being projected through the moving camera. So the camera moves, but the geometry doesn't. So in this example, everything is lined up on frame 1, but as soon as you go to any other frame, the angle of projection changes and nothing lines up. As part of this workflow, we need to lock the projection at frame 1, but still let the tracking camera move every frame. The optimal way to achieve this is to duplicate the camera, lock it to the alignment frame and refocus the projection. Move the action schematic to locate the 3D tracked camera. Select the camera and press CTRL D to duplicate it. As a personal preference, I like moving this new camera closer to my geometry so I know they belong together. Now this new camera has the same animation as the original. To lock this camera to frame 1, we need to delete all the animation on the other frames. With the camera selected, switch to the animation menu. To quickly see the selected object's animation, press SHIFT TAB. All we are interested in is the first frame. Press the KEEP button. This wipes out the animation on all the selected channels except for the current frame we are on. Exit the animation editor and scrub the time bar. So we have two cameras and one of them is matched to frame 1. However, the projection still looks incorrect. Double click on the diffuse map for its controls. In the texture menu, refocus the projection to come from camera 2 as opposed to the result cam. Now when you scrub the time bar, everything stays aligned and the tracked camera can move through the environment. Press F4 to go to the result view. When you scrub the time bar, you can see how the image moves as if it's actually 3D that has perspective and parallax. As a reminder, we are projecting onto very large surface objects, but everything we are focusing on is within the frame border. Now I don't know if any of you missed what happened to the tracking locators from the original track. Well, they are still there. Just go to the Priority Editor and click Z Sort. Go back to the main menu. Scrubbing the time bar, the tracking locators should still match up to the scene. I think it's time to bring in the scooter. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can take the output of action and combine it with the scooter using a comp node. But as an alternative choice, you could add it to the existing action composite through a projection. I'll perform option 2. Go back to the media menu, select the scooter entry and re-enable the matte option. Double click on the thumbnail to add it to the composite. That doesn't look correct because it's not projected and it's also not positioned correctly in 3D space. Let's first deal with the projection. Switch to the action bin menu. With the entry still selected, add a diffuse map to the image object. Double click on the diffuse map and in the texture menus, change the mapping to projection. Unlike our 5K still, we need to project from the result camera because the scooter matches the original camera move. The next aspect to deal with is its positioning in 3D space. Press space F4 to see the working view. When you rotate the view, you will see that the scooter is behind the tracking locators. However, the scooter's correct position in 3D space is at the locators. You do this to ensure the scooter is correctly displayed, but also if the scooter is not at the correct position in 3D space, it will appear to slide over the background as opposed to sticking with the original camera move. To make no mistake, go to the action schematic and move the scooter nodes under the locator called scooter. Drag a connection from the locator to the scooter's axis node. Double click on the locator for its controls. Switch the axis behavior to centroid transform. 
This will move the surface to the centre of the locators. Now that's almost perfect, and it looks pretty good in the working view. However, if you switch to the result view with F4, you can see that the ground is cropping the wheels. So we need to adjust the X rotation of the surface to face the camera and not cut the ground. Scrubbing the time bar, you can see that everything lines up, and the scooter has a new home. The only thing that's left to do is composite the shadow. Press ALT-1 for a single view, and switch to the batch schematic. Switch to the batch node bin, and drag out a comp node. Take the scooter shadow source node, and connect it into the first red and blue inputs of the comp node. Now take the action output, and connect it into the second red input of the comp node. Now bring up the comp node's controls, and its result. Set the blend mode to subtract. Now adjust the transparency to around 50%. And there is our composite pretty much complete. We could still tweak the composite further, but ultimately we've rebuilt an entire 3D environment with a still photo and projections. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.